We want to turn to the Word of God now. We're turning in our Bibles to Luke chapter 24 and verse 36. And this is our first message in Christ in the crisis. Reading from Luke chapter 24 and verse 36 through to verse 45. And it says there, beginning in verse 36, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Let's pray together. Father, I do pray that this video, this testimony, this preaching, Lord God, would touch some heart to turn unto you in the midst of this crisis. Father, we pray for a manifestation of the real Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, that you'll come to us in our crisis hour, in this nation, in this city, in this world of ours. We do want the real Christ of the Bible to be revealed in this hour. And Father, pray, I pray, O oh God, speak to some heart right now who's going through a crisis. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. My message, Christ in the crisis. Since we're starting a new series, all of us are in a unique situation in our world at this time. And my message is Christ in the crisis. The word crisis actually means when you come to a situation or a time that's unstable and dangerous, affecting an entire group of people, a community, a whole society, or an individual. The Greek word for crisis in its original means a test in time, an emergency time, a decision time, a time of change in which either things are going to get worse or they're going to get better. That is what the word crisis means, an absolute unique time, an unusual time where it's the end of everything or it's a whole new beginning of recovery and deliverance. It's very interesting that in the Chinese language, that the word crisis is made up of two different symbols. And the first symbol means danger, and the second symbol means opportunity. In other words, in the, in the Chinese language, crisis itself means it is a terrible time of danger, but oh, what an opportunity it is. Great things can happen at that time. Either things will get better or things will get worse <clears throat> in a crisis. We have come to a crisis hour in our generation and in the Church of Jesus Christ. Right now this morning, about three quarters of the earth are in lockdown. Between 150 to 200 nations are in the same situation as us with this corona crisis or this coronavirus. They actually say, the doctors and experts, they say it is 10 times more dangerous than the flu. It is six times more contag contagious than the flu. And it targets the vulnerable, the sick, the old, those who are, who are at most risk. Already they say there's about 500,000 people in our world diagnosed with it. Over 20,000 deaths have come uh, uh, about through it. And they say that two out of every hundred people who get it will die from it. My friends, I know there's lots of opinions about this crisis, but be in no doubts that this is a very real crisis hour that we are living in a very real crisis hour. This crisis that began 
in China quickly moved to Italy. There's been 8,000 deaths in Italy. Even funerals are banned in the nation of Italy at this minute where this crisis is going on. In one day, 900 people died through this virus. Moving over to Spain, there's been 6,000 deaths and it's moving faster than in Italy. Already in the US and the UK, there's been a thousand deaths. All of us know this is gonna affect our economy. Many Christians are making light of this crisis, but I wanna tell you it's affected all of our lives, right down to the smallest of people, right across our world. We are in a crisis hour. This didn't even happen during the Second World War. And now world economy is being affected. All of your jobs, all of your shops, all of your families are being affected. Let me bring you to this message here this morning, Christ in the crisis. We've already read here in Luke, and look at verse 36 with me for a second. And it says, and as they speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. My message is Christ in the crisis. The disciples in Luke chapter 24 were in a crisis. Christ had been crucified, betrayed, slandered, mocked, laid in a grave. It was the hour of darkness and the disciples are shut behind closed doors. They've been given a commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The salvation of all nations rests on your shoulders. And yet it's an hour of shock, of disappointment, of confusion, of where the power of hell has prospered. And as they're behind locked doors together, it says here in Luke 24, as they thus spake about these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. Saints, I wanna tell you here this morning, that Christ is a Christ of the crisis. Where you find crisis, where you find illness, where you find cancer, where you find tragedy, where you find demon possession, you will find Christ right in the midst of that. Are you in a storm this morning? Christ is there, whether you see him or you see him not. All through the Bible, I can give you examples of Christ in the crisis. We're, we're told in the scriptures that Christ came to the pool of Bethesda, and there laying in those five porches, we're told in the Bible that there lay a great multitude of impotent or, powerf or powerless uh, folk, of those who are blind, the halt who could not walk, withered, who had limbs that had literally withered up. And listen to this, it says there was a certain man, we don't even have his name, who was impotent, 38 years he could not walk. But you know what? Right in the crisis, 38 years, a hopeless situation, Christ comes to that man at the point of his need. This is the Christ of the crisis. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse nine, we actually read there about Christ coming to a synagogue, being there in the synagogue. And it says, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they, the religious folk there, asked Christ, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him? And you know what happened. He told that man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth. And that withered hand was made totally whole. Saints, Christ came to that man. We're also told about a woman in the house of Simon the Pharisee, that religious man. And as Christ was there preaching, sharing, fellowshipping in that home, a woman without a name came to him. And it says she began to wash his feet with tears and to wipe his feet then with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. There's Simon, the religious Pharisee. And he looked at Christ and he said, if this man knew who this woman was, he would never let her touch him. But you know what? The prophet Christ knew exactly who he's dealing with, a woman in a crisis. Her sin was binding and destroying her life, but she got to the Christ. We're told again in Mark chapter five about a ruler in the synagogue called Jairus by name, that he came to Christ and lay, lay, lay in, uh, saying, my, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. 
and praying him, will you come and heal? Saints, I'm talking about a crisis hour, an individual life of sickness, demon possession, of economic financial crisis, of our world in crisis. That's where you will find Jesus Christ. I could keep on giving you example after example. Little Zacchaeus who climbed a tree to find Christ. He was a man in crisis. He had all the money and yet his soul was in a crisis. Mary Magdalene, possessed of seven demons, but Christ came to her. A group of disciples in a ship in the middle of the night in a storm, and Christ came onto them. A great crowd in a wilderness without food, almost fainting. Christ was there in the midst of that crisis. A woman caught in adultery, brought to Christ, about to be stoned. Christ in the crisis. Do you understand what I'm saying here this morning? That our Christ is a Christ for the crisis hour. He comes walking in the midst of crisis. When a man came running onto him, filled with a legion of demons, Christ is the Christ of the crisis. Saints, I want to tell you that Christ comes walking on the waves of the sea. He'll be in your storm. He is right at your sickbed. He is the one that'll come to you when your mind is confused. I want to give you three points this morning before I conclude on this first message in our series. And I've got three points here. Finding Christ in the crisis. Secondly, calling upon Christ in the crisis. And third and lastly, giving glory to Christ in the crisis. Look again with me at Luke chapter 24. And we're actually told there that when Christ appeared in the midst of them, it was a crisis hour. No locked door is going to keep Christ out, I assure you. Praise God. He is a Christ who manifests himself and he'll stand right in the midst of your crisis hour. You'll find him by your bed. You'll find him in your home. You'll find him in the midst of your crisis. He is there. And we're told here that as Christ was standing in the midst of them, that they could not discern it. They thought it was a spirit or a ghost. They're standing there seeing him physically, visibly, literally in the midst of their crisis. But you know what? His closest disciples said it has to be a spirit. It has to be a ghost. It has to be a mirage. They could not discern Christ in the midst of their crisis. I believe many of you are the same as the disciples. You're in a crisis hour and you cannot see him. He is there. You behold him and yet you think it's a spirit. Is it a mirage? Is it your eyes? Is it your mind? Is it just merely something you've been taught? Or is this the Christ of the Bible? You see, Christ came right into their midst, right into the crisis. And he stood right in the midst. But to discern Christ is another thing. My first point, finding Christ right in the midst of the crisis. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 6, we read about a centurion who came to Christ. I'm talking about finding Christ in your crisis. Not everyone finds Christ in their crisis. Not everyone goes to Christ in the crisis. Not everyone is looking for Christ in the crisis. Do you, do you remember when Christ came walking on the sea in the midst of the storm? You know, again, they thought it was a spirit, a ghost. It's a storm. They need Christ, but they think it's a spirit walking on the water. Can you find Christ in your crisis? Do you know how to find Christ in your crisis? Well, the centurion in Matthew 8, it says that he found Christ. He went to Christ. He sought after Christ, saying unto him, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Do you know what that centurion knew how to find Christ in the crisis? He's got a crisis in his home, but he goes looking for the man Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I'll come with you. He says, you don't need to come. I'm a man under authority. And I know if you send the word, just speak the word, that my servant will be healed this hour. Do you remember the four friends who brought their friend on a sickbed? 
and they broke open the roof of the house. Can you imagine that happening this morning? They're so desperate, but you know what? They know how to find Christ in the crisis. Their friend is sick and they can't help him. Their friend is sick and no doctor can do anything, but they do know how to find Christ. Do you know how to find Christ? Are you in a crisis and where is he? Where is Christ? Why isn't the word of God working? Where is Christ in the midst of the coronavirus? Where is he in our city, our nation? I want to tell you, you need to find Christ in the crisis. Lots of people are in this crisis and they'll never find Christ. They'll never find him. They're not looking for him. They're not seeking him. They don't know how to discern him in the midst of that. Do you remember the father with the demonized boy? He brought his little boy to the disciples to those nine disciples, and the disciples couldn't help them. They, they laid hands on them. They must have spat on them. They prayed over them. They rebuked the devil, and the devil didn't come out. The child is in a terrible condition. But you know what? My father could have said, the church doesn't have an answer. The apostles don't have an answer. God's people don't have an answer. But you know what? He pushed on past them and sought Christ. He found Christ. You know, you may be in the church and say, where is the power? Where are the miracles? Why aren't my needs being answered? My friend, I'm sorry if we, the church, haven't met your need, but there is one you need to find. Push past the church. Go on further past the apostles and find the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about finding Christ in the middle of the crisis. You remember when a rich young ruler come to Christ, you'll say he, he was seeking after Christ. He found Christ. No, he didn't. When he found Christ and he said, I want eternal life. I want salvation. I want to know how to be right with God. You know what Christ said? Go sell all that you have and follow me. Oh boy. <laughs> it's one thing to find Christ. You know what? He's looking at Christ. He's here in Christ, but he never truly found Christ. He turned around and he walked away sad. You see, people say, but I'm seeking, I'm praying, I want. But did you find Christ? I'm talking about more than religion here. Or what about the little lady who had an issue of blood? The Bible says in Mark chapter 12 that she had an issue of blood or she was bleeding for a period of 12 years. She was terribly sick. She was anemic. She was weak in a terrible condition. Listen to what it says in verse 26, that she had suffered many things of many physicians, and she had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather she was growing worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, notice this, finding Christ, as soon as she heard about him, she came in the press behind him, and she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. I'm talking about finding Christ in the midst of your crisis. I don't know what your crisis is. Is it in your mind? Is it in your heart? Is it in your spirit? Is it in your soul? Is it in your body? Is it in your finance? Is it in your family? I don't know. But I'm telling you, you can find Christ in the midst of your crisis, but you are going to have to push through the crowd in this hour. Second of all, calling upon Christ in the crisis, not only finding Christ in the crisis, but calling upon Christ in the crisis. We read in Matthew chapter 8 about the disciples in a boat, in a storm. And in Matthew chapter 8, it says, and as his disciples came to him, they awoke him. He was in the boat. He is in their lives. He is walking with them. He is in their situation. He is right in the midst of it. But you know what is happening here in Matthew chapter 8? He is asleep in their boat. And they come and they woke him up. And they said, Lord, save us for we are perishing. And it, say, it says over in Mark chapter 4 that he was in the hinder or the back part of the ship and he was asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto master, carest thou not that we perish? Do you think that we're any different than they are? Still us in our crisis, we say, Lord, why aren't you answering me? Lord, don't you see? 
Lord, don't you care? Lord, don't you understand? Lord, don't you see the burden? Lord, don't you understand the crisis? Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you healing me? Why aren't you answering me? Why aren't you changing me? Why aren't you saving me? Lord God, why aren't you changing the circumstance? You know, the disciples went to him. This is his apostles, those who walked with them and seen the miracles. And you know what? In their experience, they're saying, Christ is asleep. Christ isn't caring about me. Or in Matthew chapter 14, when the disciples seen Christ walking in the sea, listen to what it says. It says they were troubled, saying it is a spirit. But listen to what they done. They cried out for fear. What's my point? Calling upon Christ and the disciples. Is Christ asleep in your boat? Then cry unto him. Learn how to pray. Learn how to lay a hold of Christ. I'm talking about a heart-filled cry. I'm talking about a desperate cry. I'm talking about you lifting up your hands and saying, Lord, I can't manage. Lord, I'm at the end of myself. Lord, I'm perishing. Lord, I don't know how to make it through the crisis. And I'm telling you, Christ will never deny you. Our Christ is a Christ who answers prayer. He'll meet you in the midst of your crisis. And as they cried out for fear in the midst of that storm, he's walking on the water. Listen to what he said. They cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them. Isn't that wonderful? Straightway, he spoke on them. What did he say? Be a good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. You know, we know straight after that, Peter came and walked in the water. And again, as he began to walk in water, then his eyes got on the storm and his eyes got on himself and his eyes started looking around about him. And what happened? He began to sink. You know what he done? He cried out to Christ, help me, help me, help me. And we're told that Jesus Christ Oh, he didn't criticize his faith in that, that hour. That's not a time to rebuke his faith. It was a time to reach out his hand and to pull him up again and to put him back in the boat. Do you remember as Christ was leaving the city of Jericho? And we're told the crowds are there in the streets, pressing around him. They're all in around Jesus Christ as he's walking out of Jericho. And there's a little man there called Blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> and blind Bartimaeus, it says there that he was there begging and he began to cry out. It says this in Mark 10, 47. And when he heard, notice all these people, as soon as they hear, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And listen to what happened. And many around him charged him that he should hold his peace. Don't be bothering the master. Don't be praying like that. But what did he do? He cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus stood still. What did Christ do? He stood still. Friend, can I ask you, if you need saved this morning, cry unto him. Save me. Save me. If you're sick this morning, cry out to him. Have mercy on me, thou son of David. Have mercy on. Don't tell me that Christ won't stand still. We're told that he stood still when he heard that cry. And they called the blind man. As soon as he called for him, bring that blind man here. That's what Christ does. He comes walking in the midst of your storm. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise up. He calleth for you. It's not what the religious do. One minute they're saying, keep your voice down. Don't be disturbed in the meeting. Don't, don't be acting like that. And then Christ calls them and they said, come, come. You know, you know, the master's calling for you. That's what religion does. But I want to tell you, Christ call upon. Learn not only how to find Christ in the crisis. Learn to cry unto Christ in the crisis. Do you remember that dying thief on the cross? Do you remember how he was there? And we're told for three hours he hung on the cross. He's a wicked man. He's a sinner. He deserves the punishment of his sins. He's being punished by the law. He deserves to die a horrible death. And there on the cross, we're told that he was rebuking Christ. He was accusing Christ. He was making accusations. He was doing the same as the other thief. They were both 
mocking Christ. If thou be the son of God, then deliver yourself and help us as well. But suddenly that dying thief realized this is no ordinary man. This is Christ. Do you see where Christ is in the midst of this sinner's storm? He is a dying thief about to go to an eternal hell. He, he'll never be free. He'll, he'll never make it through this crisis. But right in the crisis, he suddenly realized, he didn't realize it at the beginning. He couldn't discern it at the beginning. He said, this is just a man. This is a false teacher. But suddenly realizes Christ, God's son, is in his crisis. I'm dying. I'm in trouble. I'm going to hell. But Christ is right. He's the man of the middle cross. He is Christ crucified right in the midst of your crisis. And you know what he done? He began to cry out. He learned how to cry out in his crisis. And he says, remember me. Remember me. What a simple prayer. It's not a strong prayer. It's not a long prayer. It's not an intellectual prayer. But I believe it was a cry from the heart saying, oh, God, help me. I'm in trouble this day. Will you remember me when you enter into your kingdom? I'm talking about a desperate cry from the heart. Whether you're walking on the water, whether you're in a storm, whether you're a dying thief, can you cry unto Christ? Do you know how to cry unto Christ in the crisis? And third and lastly, this is my third point, giving glory to Christ in the midst of the crisis, given glory to Christ in the crisis as we close. Do you remember in John chapter 11, the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha, this family, a brother and two sisters in a home. And we read there in John chapter 11 about a message reaching Jesus that his friend Lazarus is sick, very sick, seriously sick, and he must come. He must come. He could heal him. If only Christ can get there. You know, they knew who to send for. They knew who to pray onto. They knew who had the power in the midst of crisis. This was a serious sickness that would lead to Lazarus' death. And those two sisters said, if we can get Christ here, if we can find Christ, if we can call upon Christ, then there's an answer. But listen what happened in John 11 and 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. What's my point here, this last point? Given glory to Christ in the crisis. Do you realize that this sickness it wasn't for the glory of man or the glory of devil or the glory of illness. Do you realize God had a plan in this crisis, this terrible crisis? And I know the devil brings sickness. I know that. I, I, I know it was the devil that put sickness in Job's body. I know that. But I want to tell you, God had a plan in Lazarus's crisis, and it was going to get much worse, I assure you. Do you know what Christ done? When he got the message, come, come, you're the answer. Do you know what the Bible says? He waited two more days. He waited two more days. It was a crisis hour. He had to come now. He had answer now. But do you know what? Christ waited. He held back deliberately, deliberately. You know why? He's going to move in the midst of that crisis. You know what I'm telling you? Is right in the midst of a crisis, God's plan is to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what all of these crises are all about. Do you know how to give glory to Christ in the crisis? In Matthew chapter 8 and 2, it says that a leper came unto Jesus. A leper. His body is diseased. He can't go in amongst other folk. He is put outside the camp, outside the city, outside of his family. He'll eventually die of this disease. But it says that he came unto Jesus. And listen to what it says. There came a leper and worshipped him. Have you learned to worship in your crisis? You're saying, why hasn't God answered me? Have you learned to worship in your crisis? Oh, yes, you've got leprosy. But do you know how to worship? Do you know how to glorify Christ? I know I'm not asking an easy thing. You say I'm sick. Do you know how to worship? 
You say you're in financial ruin. Do you know how to worship Jesus Christ? Because this leper did. That's how he came to Christ. He's in crisis. But his first thing is, I worship you. And this is what he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And we know the Lord did. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18, it says that while he spake these things unto them, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. Worship Jesus, saying, my daughter is even now dead. Can you imagine being a man whose little daughter, the child of his heart, the one that he loves, is dead? And he's coming to Christ in his crisis. But how is he coming? It says he came worshipping. He says, my daughter's dead. But he comes worshiping since this real Christ of the crisis. He comes right into the crisis. But do you know how to glorify Christ in the crisis? Or what about Matthew chapter 15? And it says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thy son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and he said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. And listen this carefully before we close. Then came she and worshipped him. But what did she do? She worshipped him. Her daughter's life being destroyed, utterly destroyed by the devil utterly destroyed in torment what's she doing worshiping do you know christ didn't even answer he ignored her he ignored her he actually preaches a sermon and said this isn't for her and what does she do she comes worshiping saying lord help me i'm telling you how to find christ in the crisis i'm telling you how to cry under christ in the crisis but third of all, I'm telling you how to glorify Christ in the crisis. Not many can do that. Not many find him in the crisis. Not many cry on to him in the crisis. Not many glorify him in the crisis. But this little lady did. And you know what she said? I've hardly found this type of faith in Israel. She's a pagan, an idolater. She's from another nation. She's outside the covenant of grace and the covenant of promises given to Abraham. And yet that little lady, she overcame. She found Christ and Christ healed her little, little daughter. Do you remember what Job done when the devil came against him and took his 10 children and took his health and took his wealth and took everything from him and he didn't understand it. It was an hour of darkness. You know the first thing Job done? It says he fell down and he worshiped the Lord. He didn't understand it. He didn't know if he could make it through, but he's going to worship the Lord in the midst of his crisis. His heart is broken. His heart is broken. His children are dead. He's confused. He thinks God has sent the fire on his property. He thinks God has done this. It was the devil, wasn't God? And yet he worshiped the Lord. He didn't sin with the words of his mouth. And when his wife said, curse God and die, he said, I won't. I'll keep the integrity of my words. Let me finish here. Our first message in this series, Luke chapter 17 and verse 12. And it says, he, Christ, entered into a certain village. And there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voice. See, they're in quarantine. They're, they're, they're not allowed to approach. They stood afar off. Keep your two meters. Don't you come near me with your leprosy. Keep your distance. And they stood afar off and they cried aloud and they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew how to find Christ. They knew how to cry unto Christ, how to pray. They knew how to do that in the midst of the crisis. But let's go further. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest, unto the doctors, unto the lawyers of this hour. And it came to pass. As they went, they were cleansed. And only one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back 
and with a loud voice. And what did he do? He glorified God. The other nine didn't. I am terribly sad to tell you that I believe there's a lot in the church never glorify Christ in the midst of the crisis. Even when he answers their prayer, they think it was just them. They think it was circumstance. And our world, in a few weeks after the corona crisis, they'll say it's business as normal. Business as normal. Sure, we knew it wasn't much of a crisis. That's what they'll say. They'll forget all about God. But there is one leper who'll turn back and glorify God. And he fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus and given him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Listen what Jesus said. There were 10 that were cleansed. Where are the nine? Did they not return to give glory to God? Save this one stranger. Friends, can I ask you, our friends in this church, we're in a crisis hour in our nation, in our families, in our lives, sickness, finance, family members on their way to hell. Do you know how to find Christ in the crisis? Do you know how to cry unto him? Have mercy on me. I need you, Lord. I don't have anywhere else to go. Do you know how to glorify Christ? How to worship him? Your daughter is dead. Your body is hurting. I'm going to worship Jesus. I don't know how I'm going to come through this, but I am going to worship him. I'm not even sure whether he's going to answer me, but I am going to worship him in the midst of the storm. And I tell you, those disciples in that room, when Christ appeared in the midst, they were shocked, they were terrified, they could hardly discern Christ in the midst of it. But he opened up their understanding. It says, you know, the thoughts in their mind, they thought it can't be, it's impossible. It can't be Christ, he had a food to prove. It's me in your crisis. I don't know if you're in my crisis. I am in your crisis. I'll prove it to you. I'll show them physically in your crisis. And you know what? He opened up their understanding that they could understand the word of God, that this was him in their home, right in the midst of them, in their crisis hour. It wasn't over. It was only but beginning. Let's pray together here in our homes together in the light of this message. We're in a crisis hour. I'm just setting the focus here, telling you where we're going to be going in the messages this coming Wednesday night, next week. Other brothers are going to be preaching to you. Others are going to be testifying to you. I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the Christ of the crisis. He is a healer. He is a savior. He is a deliverer. I don't have any other answer than the person of Jesus Christ. Can we agree together, pray here as we close this meeting this morning.